So, do you do you still have some energy left? No. <laughs> so, um, the last session for the day. Hopefully not that that technically. Uh, five and two point five architectures comparison. If you ever had a, had joined um, fiber conferences in the past few years, we have been promised by getting a, a super server or whatever architecture which is SMP capable. Well, with uh, fiber two point five, we are getting there slowly but I think there is still improvement possible with Firebird 3. Nevertheless, let's the agenda for uh, this session. Um, a few words about motivation. I will show you um, a, a quick way to install multiple instances of Firebird 2.5 because we will use, uh, we will do um, a few examples in this session where we use uh, different architectures we will talk about the process connection cache model in the different architectures. Um, in Fiber 2.5, there is a new architecture called Super Classic. I will have a few slides on this new architecture. Then I will show you a um, demonstration on uh, how SMP utilization looks like in the different uh, architectures. I will talk about the new feature, um, the shared database access which is, in my opinion, very useful. A uh, few aspects about administration, so where in respect in administration the different architectures <laughs> differ and uh, another additional things in question and answers. If you have any questions during the session, please uh, just, just ask. So, first of all, uh, just uh, ask for a, a bit of audience participation. Um, who is using Fiber 2.0 in, in production? 1.0, I'm sorry, 1.0. 1.5, 2.0, and 2.5. Which architecture? Super server? Super classic? Classic? Well, Fiber 2.5 offers now four architectures. Uh, we'll, uh, you already know Super Server Classic Server, a uh, new one called Super Classic and the embedded server isn't new but um, it's now based on the new Super Classic architecture so this is a, a change in 2.5 as well. All of them have advantages, disadvantages, um, so there's, there's a good reason for a developer um, or an administrator to know the basic differences here in the different architectures. Uh, the goal of this session is to, dis to discuss the differences. So the, the, the good thing about the architectures in Fiber is that the database file is binary compatible between all architectures. So it's, it's very easy to switch between these architectures. So you just, just take the physical database file and install a um, other uh, architecture and you're ready to go with uh, the new architecture on the same database file. The installation, um, if you go to the Fiber and SQL um, website, the installation file you you have to download depends basically on the architecture. On Windows it's either a, a single downloadable file in case of the uh, setup routine or the zip distribution. They, they all uh, come in, in one one package, um, except that the embedded server is uh, available as a separate download. Um, the other platforms uh, usually offer um, a separate download for Super Server and Classic Server and Super Classic. So Classic Server and Super Classic are usually one package as well on the other platforms. The installation file also, also depends on the operating system or uh, if you want to go with 32-bit uh, or 64-bit 
it's either an installer file or RPM file, package file, or a zip distribution or the card distribution. And also um, the, either the debug build or the non-debug build. So it's, it l looks a bit um, uh, complicated, the whole thing, but um, as far as you know what architecture you have to choose, uh, it's um, pretty easy. Well, with, with the installer for Windows, um, you usually get to a point where you have to, to dis, um, decide between classic server and super server. If you are choosing the classic server, then in 2.5 there's an additional option where you able to install the super classic version. I don't know how many, if you are using Fiber on Windows, I don't know how many people of you are using the installer. Uh, I don't use it. I think that the zip distribution is, is, is uh, much, much easier and much more flexible. So what, what I usually do is if I'm installing uh, several instances of, of Firebird, I uh, have Firebird um, directory and, and just uh, name the, the subdirectory with uh, the version, the TCP port, the instances listening and the architecture. So this one is already installed. It's it's installed as a as a service. So it's uh, pretty much here and started. So if we want to have another instance, it's basically you you download the zip file. It's a 32-bit VMware. Doesn't matter here. So you simply extract the zip file, and the first thing you have to do is to just the TCP port. <laughs> so let's look. I have to change already. So there's a uh, configuration parameter, remote service port. You have to change to the TCP port. You want the instance uh, uh, which should uh, use the TCP port here. That's pretty much all you have to do. You then have to install the instance. Just go into the directory here. We are having here. The, we want to install the classic server here. So we go into the bin directory and execute install classic. And by providing a name here, um, this is the instance name um, I'm running as a service. So usually I use the same um, service name as the name of the directory. So that's classic server. We install that. And we go back to the, the services control panel. We will see there's another instance installed on a different TCP port now. It's it's pretty much the same for if we want to install super server. Um, again, um, just in the, the TCP port, um, go into the binary directory and type uh, install super with the instance name. So we now have a third instance here uh, installed as a service, as a Windows service. We also see that uh, Super Server installs Guardian. Um, well, the Guardian is, is, in my opinion, a bit outdated because um, uh, Windows also allows you to restart the field service. So, but it doesn't matter for this example here. So uh, what we have now is we have three instances running here. If we have a look, we will see that that this one is the super server with um, the FB server binary. We have we have the classic server here, uh, listening on uh, 3060, and we have super classic here. So three instances running in parallel. That's that's my preferred way to install a fiber server fiber instance. Well, let's let's talk about the process and connection and cache model. The super server architecture. Uh, basically is is one one server process uh, with a with a thread pool and a shared page metadata cache along all connections for one particular database so clients connecting to the database server via uh, the server process and the server process handles the client requests and the thing is that that the server process uh, manages the, 
the threads pool and um, and the page uh, cache is shared along uh, all uh, connections to one and the same database. The classic server is a bit different here. If you connect to a database using the classic server, there is um, per connection uh, the FBI net server process holding its uh, private page and metadata cache. So that's that's the main difference. We will also see later on uh, how this what this means for for caching for the cache modeling in, in respect to to main memory usage. So with quite some connections on one and the same server, possibly you, uh, even if you have more instances installed, uh, the number of processes here uh, can grow quite quickly. So that's a thing you have to watch out if you if you. Uh, having uh, many connections to, to the databases. The super classic uh, architecture is new in Fiber 2.5. Basically, it, it combines the two worlds of the super server and the classic server. The super classic architecture has in common with the super server, uh, super server architecture that, that there is one process uh, listening to incoming requests. It's, it's called FBI net server. It's like in classic server. On POSIX, um, it's uh, a new binary. It's a new binary. The, the super classic architecture also has a thread pool, and it has in common with with the classic server that that the page and metadata cache is private per per um, connection as well. But the difference here is that one process, the FBI net server, for instance, is responsible for maintaining the, the caches where we have. In the instance that um, there is no no other process in between here to, to manage the page and metadata cache in respect to to locking synchronize say, uh, synchronization when something changes on the pages. I don't have an architecture picture for the embedded server because the embedded server is, uh, as we might know, it's it's just a set of files. Uh, one of this server in, in one DLL. The, the main change in Fiber 2.5 is that the embedded server is now uh, based on the, on the super classic architecture. Um, previously, in, in previous versions, it was used in super server architecture. So we will see the, the SMP utilization and uh, in, in the example uh, later on. So um, for the embedded server, um, in my opinion, the embedded server is um, uh, that it is based on the super classic is, is one of the major. Uh, one of the major advantage in 2.5 um, uh, if you're using embedded server. Uh, with the advantages, ye is, it is SMP capable, even if connecting only to one database. You have a shared database access feature, so you are able now to access a database uh, with the embedded server even if it is already used by a classic server connection or a super classic connection. Previously, this wasn't able, uh, wasn't possible because the embedded server was based on the super server architecture. Thus, it um, required an exclusive lock on the database file. So th this isn't the case anymore. So that's pretty nice. Nevertheless, uh, you have to watch out if you deploy uh, uh, applications with the embedded server. Uh, you have to watch out the page buffers value. Like in any situations when when switching from super server to something else, or from classic server or super classic server to super server, you always have to watch out the page buffers value uh, at database level. We will see an example later. Well, I've already told um, uh, told about them. A process and connection model. So super server is a single process per instance and a pooled, a multiple pooled worker threads. Classic server is a single process per connection, separate worker threads for automatic sweep and services API requests. Super classic is in respect to the process and connection model the same as super server. So there's one single process per instance and embedded server is not um, a separate process, uh, but it runs in the application address space. So the server executable is uh, FB server for super server, FB inet server for classic server and super classic server on Windows and FB SMP server at POSIX. The only difference um, is if you want to use classic server uh, 
you usually start uh, start only the FBI behind its server, either servers or by using the A switch as application. A super classic server is started by using the M switch. Well, embedded server is the DLL. So the cache model, the cache model uh, in super server we have a shared, pa uh, shared page and metadata cache per database. That's different in the other architectures. So the other architectures are more uh, memory intensive. So you have to watch out the memory usage, um, the memory available in the server. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. So as a bit of a preferred topic, it's, it's the maximum cache size. There are some formulas. So if we are talking about super server, so the maximum cache size is the page size multiplied by the page buffer. So if you have a page size of uh, 8K and a page buffer value of uh, 10,000, you have 80 megabytes uh, per database. And this grows up if you have more instances per instance, and if you have more instance on the server, this multiplies as well. So. The main thing here is that for classic server and for super classic server, and as well for the embedded server as, it's, as it is now based on super classic, is that the maximum cache size is calculated like super server, but you have to multiply the number of connections. So that's that's the main difference, and and you really have to watch out the page buffers value if you are switching forth and back, uh, uh, forth and back uh, with the different architectures. Well, that's the example is pretty obvious. I think uh, what we what we have here is process explorer. And now uh, let's say I stop this one here. I stop this one here. So we only have now super classic so we see the memory used here. Uh, if we if we issue a few connections to our instance here, and let's say we want to have I don't know just connecting, we will see that we get 50 connections and yeah well the the memory usage grows up if we disconnect this one here and let's say we we increase the the page buffers a bit uh, let's say let's say to uh, this is basically the default value 75 for classic, super classic. Let's say we have 10,000 and we add rows and I won't connect 50 clients now with this value because this would end up in a disaster. Uh, let's say we want to have three. Let's see what happens. We'll see that memory usage grows up uh, pretty quickly with with the number of connections. So be careful with with your page buffers value. Also, in practice, it has shown that the page buffer values in classic or super classic lower than thousand should be should be quite okay. So, um, but the main thing here is if. The main thing here is that, that if you are switching a database from super server because the shared metadata cache, you increase the page buffers value and and we want to do the same thing for super server and connect with this guy here and clear all rows, add all rows with super server, I uh, should be fine. So select all. So what happens here now is that you will see an increase of the memory usage to about uh, 18 megabytes for 
for caching for this one particular database. So, last one. Uh, be careful <laughs> with the page buffers value. So, uh, while it's it's pretty useful for uh, for other large systems with a lot of memory, and if you are using classic, um, you reach uh, the maximum memory usage quite quite quickly if you if you don't be if you don't take care about the page buffers value and, and things are getting very very slow because it begins uh, to, to to swap to the disk. Well, let's talk about the super classic architecture. It's a new architecture in 2.5. Basically, we have uh, one worker listener process with a thread pool and um, and the cache per. Uh, connection, private cache pro, uh, per connection, um, a database file and possibly uh, another process. Another process can be another super classic instance, another classic um, instance, another embedded server instance. So um, the main thing here is because we have still um, different processes here running, um, the, the information about what has been changed on the databases, uh, what has changed in respect to events, data, the whole synchronization log, uh, logic needs to be kept somewhere. Um, this is the log table. So the log table is in shared memory. It might be uh, persisted to the, to the data, to the file system. So the good thing about SMP, uh, the SMP capability of Superclastic is that that even if you are connecting several clients to one and the same database, Super Classic is able to use SMP or multiple cores, multiple CPUs, and it also can use multiple cores and CPUs if you are connecting to more databases. Well, it's 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 also support um, SMP environments for sweep and, and services API requests. So if you're uh, doing a, a backup or a store. We are the services API. You see, uh, you should see an improvement here as well if you are on a SMP environment. If other client connections keep your server busy as well, so and there is no exclusive lock on the database file necessary. The connection to the user security database is cached, so that's a difference to the classic server. So usually, uh, connect times should be should be faster. As in Super Server, Super Classic also allows you to safely shut down the entire instance with all actively uh, running uh, database connections. Uh, on the other side, like in Super Server, if something happens, something bad happens in one of your connections and the server crashes, then the, the instance process, the worker process crashes. This also means that other connections are closed and then it crashes as well. So that's one thing uh, you have to keep in mind if you're uh, asking for more crash resistance in respect to several connections, um, you probably are going better with, with classic. Well, thread communication uh, is now used because we have one process and a thread pool. Uh, thread communication is used instead of inter-process communication, uh, uh, which is needed in classic server as we have several processes per connection. Um, so this, this should, should be fast as well. And on POSIX, we don't need uh, in, in the super classic architecture the, the XINET daemon anymore. As it is um, a one process uh, connection model, well, it's, it's usable on, on 32 bit, of course, but, um, to, um, but it's more targeted to, to 64 bit uh, because of the extended memory addressing capabilities if you are using a 64 bit operating system. Well, SMP utilization, Olga mentioned already today that things are becoming really cheap now in respect to CPU power. Um, I for one uh, bought a new uh, desktop PC a few months ago with a with a hexacore AMD uh, CPU, which has been priced, which is priced now at about 160 euros. So this, the server area is, is much more expensive here. But but uh, we see that that um, perfect SMP utilization is becoming more and more important. Um, so that's that's the motivation are also behind the super classic architecture now. Well, it's improved SMP support was and still is an important goal of the Fiber project. And 
Fiber 2.5 serves as an intermediate step for a really fine-grained multi-threaded server, which is to be expected in Fiber 3.0 if nothing bad happens. So, well, all architectures in Fiber 2.5 are SMP enabled, uh, but there are differences between the architectures. Uh, we will see a live demonstration here now. The thing here is that my test client here sometimes crashes in the VM there, so I'm, I'm going to try to somehow have only the, the process monitor open here and I will start the all this one here and okay it's gonna be tricky at a lower screen resolution so let's start with let's start with I would say super classic Things are getting really tricky now. So um, we have we have a process here, and we will sort by CPU usage. We will see that currently there's nothing going on. So we will try to connect to the VMware server now, and let's say, well, ten clients. So basically, the the test here is a very very simple database with with one global temporary table here so basically the test is is just inserting number of records records here into the global temporary table and then after inserting the records um, the records get fetched to the client so uh, let's let's start with, for example, five hundred thousand. Okay, clear all. So we should see now. So CPU usage. Okay, it's right here. So. Let's let's connect one, one client here. We will see that the VMware. Um, well, my, my laptop has uh, two cores, and the VMware is um, has two cores assigned. So there is one connection to the database, and well, it's it's pretty much using one one core one core fully in this area. So if if we are connecting to one and the same database with two clients. We will see that that CPU utilization grows up, so it, it more or less is able to to use the two cores here. That's that's for one uh, using one database. It's taking a bit. So, and we even we even are able to if we connect. To another database and say, okay, we want to um, connect to the to the first database and to the second database. We will see that CPU usage of the of the server process also is able to to use two cores in, in, in this example. So. Super Classic is, is pretty good here in, in, in SMP utilization respect to connecting one database or if there are more uh, databases involved here on the server. Let's, let's see uh, how things are, are looking if we are using a different architecture here. So let's use Classic Server and we also can start Super Server. <coughs> Well, let's say classic service 60, we have one, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, 
increase that value here again. So it's our first database, uh, it's our second database. So if we are connecting five clients to uh, database one, five clients to database two, this is a um, classic server now. And if we start this one here, we will see that, that we will see per connection and FBI in its server process. And we also see that, that um, these processes, uh, the nature of processes in an operating system uh, can, can use more cores as well. Um, I think this one was a bit, uh, a bit too much now, 10 clients in 13. Uh, 500,000. So I'm going to try to stop this one here. And now let's see if things are still busy here. Yeah. Because the insert process into the global temporary TL is a stored procedure. So basically if when I'm stopping the client application or the client connection, the, the stored procedure probably still, still uh, do some work. So Things, things are getting so we will see that that a um, uh, few connections here will be closed automatically by the server because the client died. So um, if if we start the client here again, and now we use the, the super server architecture, that's that's the basic uh, the interesting thing here. If we are using super server on a SMP environment. And we are running two client connections in this test with your records and, and on the same database. And we execute this one here. It has to be, of course, to I'm sorry? Uh, it's a good choice. So, um, connecting two client connections to super server to one in the same database. That's, that's the important fact here. So if we go connecting this one here and we grow, go up here, it's it's basically it's basically using one core, so that's pretty much the restriction of a super server in respect to multiple cores and CPUs. So if you have only one database on your server, um, as an SMP environment probably doesn't help. So the interesting thing here is if we are. Okay, runs and runs and runs. The thing here is if we are connecting now to, to two different databases, let's see what happens. We are still using one core here. The reason for that is that per default super server is, is bound to, to one, to one core. So what you have to do is if you want, if you have multiple databases on your server with super server, you have to go into the configuration file, search for a configuration parameter, CPU affinity mask, uh, per default, it's set to one, so it, it uses the first CPU, the first core. So what we have to do is to take advantage of our two cores here with super server, you have to change that. It's, it's a bit mask. So if you want to use um, first two CPUs or cores, then it's, it's the value of three. With super server, let's see, that's it's still doing some work here. 
Well, it crashes also on the desktop PC, but it doesn't matter. The, the thing here is uh, with uh, Super Server that you have to restart the server process. So uh, this isn't the case for Classic Server and Super Classic Server. So if you change anything in the fiber.com file with Classic and Super Classic, you don't have to restart anything. So we have to restart this one here. Then we're gonna switch to the Process Explorer. And now we start this guy here again. And now taking an even smaller number. And we am um, seven. So that's, that's the first database and the second database. So we're gonna minimize this guy here. And so now let's connect to two different databases on Super Server. And we will see that we don't see anything here. Ah, I think that was even uh, was a bit. Ah, let's keep them busy. So, the first database and the second database connect two different databases. Run this one here. You will see that that the CPU utilization even with Super Server now uh, increases. So, the basic thing is the basic thing here is if if you're uh, connecting only to one database, Super Server isn't able to use any SMP environment. If you are using more databases on the same server with Super Server, then uh, uh, Super Server is able to use um, uh, multiple cores, but you have to um, change the configuration parameter, the parameter divided.conf. Mm, yeah, well, that's that's pretty much the, the summary of, of what I've told already. So the next thing is shared database access. So uh, what's happening here now is that you have one one database file, one physical database file, and you're now able to, well, you have been able in Classic already by uh, several processes connecting to one and the same database file, of course. But the shared database access also is possible um, with Super Classic now, and as um, the embedded server is based on Super Classic as well. So it's possible for embedded server as well. So. Uh, what you have here now is that you easily can connect to this guy here. Oh, this microphone is driving nuts. We even can can connect. Well, that was super classic, and now we uh, we also can connect with with another classic instance here. So that's that's very useful, very powerful, especially if you are using embedded server in your environment. So if you have uh, a demo application or uh, any 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 other client application which uses the embedded server, um, you are now able with the embedded server as well to, to connect, to use one and the same database file, even if there are other connections uh, open by a classic server, super classic server. Uh, super server uh, won't play a role here because a super server still requires an exclusive lock. So um, the needed synchronization lock information between the several processes here is is kept in a in a in a common 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 directory on Windows on Linux as well on Windows. It uses all users Firebird so. If we are going to this guy here, and let's see, well, I have to go to the VM there. That's the main point here. You will see that that if we are going to see uses update, uh, we don't see anything here. Was it cool? 
users, all users. There is a Firebase directory where um, things like like the synchronization thing between the processes is stored, and uh, yeah, the trace API is something different. Uh, but um, well, as as a summary for a shared database access, it's it's fully fully safe to to access one and uh, access one database file with the several architectures. So that's pretty nice. In respect to to administration. We have uh, many things in common here. Uh, the main difference here is that with classic server, uh, you aren't able to safely shut down an entire instance because there is no no single uh, work uh, listener process as in the other architectures. There is there is a no on on this on this guy here um, for uh, terminating all connections. This isn't. Um, uh, disadvantage is, is possibly an advantage if something goes bad with one connection, then um, the other connections in Classic Server won't be affected. Um, the good thing here is um, the things in bold font, um, they are new in Fiber 2.5. If you have, uh, have used events with Classic Server, the, the configuration parameter, there is a configuration parameter in Fiber.conf to to specify one particular TCP point where the event communication goes through. Um, this configuration parameter um, uh, wasn't used for Classic Server. So if you have been using Classic Server behind a firewall and events, it uh, was pretty much impossible. So that's that's pretty good. Um, it's also nice that, that immediate um, uh, broken connections are now um, detected immediately by Classic Server. Uh, in respect to garbage collection, uh, Super Server um, supports three garbage collection modes, background, cooperative, and the combined mode. Uh, for a Super Server, the, the garbage collection mode can be configured in the fiber.conf file. For all other architectures, uh, the garbage collection mode is cooperative. Yeah, and well, and the targeted operating system is pretty much for for all architectures with 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 a single instance, it's it's 64 bit. Um, possibly with super server uh, due to the to the shared metadata cache, uh, 32 bit as well. But for super classic server, it's uh, the targeted operating system is 64 bit. It works on uh, 32 bit as well, but. Well, additional things new in Fiber 2.5, um, the client library is now thread safe along all architectures. And for multi threaded applications, you don't have to necessarily uh, use TCP IP anymore. So this also means for the embedded server, as you don't have any TCP IP support in the embedded server, this also means that you can safely use the embedded server with multi-threaded applications. Well, that's pretty much uh, my session. I've collected a few resources here, um, two uh, webinars, uh, two presentations from Dimitri. Um, I have on the blog a comparison sheet on, on the architecture thing in English and for the German-speaking guys, um, there has been a 5.2.5 article in the German magazine, where is also the comparison table in, in German language. So that's pretty much um, uh, the session from my side. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the same. So the embedded server still, um, you can't connect uh, to an embedded server with TCP IP, but you can use it as a cli client library to a remote server. Any other questions? Very 
ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಸೊ ವೆಲ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಆರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯ